and I ran into each other at an open mic. And we tried, I tried this opener. Uh, my opener was, my opener was that I was celebrating that uh, this girl and I, that I'm seeing this girl, and she asked me to be her parents. Really exciting, right? It's a big step in a relationship is to meet parents. Well, by meet the parents, I mean that uh, the judge told me to show up at the court-mandated hearing. <laughs> and by she, I mean my ex-wife. So, uh, hey, either way, things are going to get a whole lot better, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, when I got married, this is a very real fact that probably all of you know, I was 23 when I got married, and my wife was 21. That's way too young. But, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, it's adorable. Like, we were super cute. <laughs> but when we got married, it was like letting a puppy marry a slightly smaller kitten. Like, oh, super cute, but it won't last longer than a BuzzFeed video. Like, like at the end of the YouTube video, everyone went like, no, this marriage is going to end. Like, this is, that's the end of that. Uh, yeah. So when I got married, I was working at eHarmony. Where people... Yeah, go to eHarmony. Yeah. Sponsored by eHarmony. eHarmony is where people go in their mid 30s to find their soulmate and their lifelong partner. <laughs> Worked out really well for me. Uh, no, I left eHarmony right after I got divorced and went to work at Tinder. Uh, for those of you who don't know, all of the dating apps are based in LA Match.com, Tinder. Uh, FarmersOnly.com uh, and, funny enough, in West Hollywood, Grindr. Yeah. Their offices yeah. are there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And so I got calls from all of these companies. Like every single one of them was like, hey, you work at eHarmony, you want to work here. Um, and so someone from Grindr called me and one of my good friends, a designer, worked at Grindr. And so she called me and was like, okay, like, uh, I want to pitch you on this. It's going to be kind of a weird situation, but like, we'd really love to have you working here. And so I had to think to myself, like, you know how most guys would be like, dude, dude, like if, if someone paid you a million dollars, you'd suck a guy's tip, right? Like, yeah. if, like if it was a million dollars, like easy. I, like I'll highlight everyone here, every man that has a penis, million dollars, yeah, I would suck your dick, 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 100%. Even a hundred grand. Let's let's go. Yeah. So what I had to ask myself, what I had to ask myself was like, how much would I have to get paid to help other dudes suck other dudes' dicks? Yeah. Like, like I wouldn't be involved for sure, but like I would be the grinder fairy. Like I'd be like, okay, we're gonna connect this dick to this dick and that mouth to this dick. Like that's the situation. I I would be making it happen, but I wouldn't be involved. Um, because I'm a homophobe, I eventually considered working. That's not true. That's not true. He, he's my friend, right? He's here. Ryan, I'm sorry. That's an inappropriate joke to make. I eventually worked at Tinder. I worked at Tinder working on a new app. It was very exciting. Um, and so I started at Tinder. I worked on the app, and I was trying out the app to test it out. And the first Tinder date I went on, the girl was two inches taller than me. And I realized, like, when we were doing, like, musical theater, like, I thought I was, like, average height. I was like, ah, like, I'm fine. And like, no, you're about two inches taller than the average. Like, you're not really the good height. And so this first date I showed up on, the girl was three inches taller than me. It was, like, just immediately emasculating. I felt bad. It wasn't going well. Uh, and so at the end of the night, I got up on point to give her a kiss. Uh, <laughs> and what my ballet training paid off. I was finally ready. Like, this is the first time <laughs> this shit paid off. I was ready to go, Mwah! thank you, have a good night. Anyway, there was no second date. Uh, <laughs> on my actual second girl that I met on Tinder, um, we had a really great date. It was fun, we were connecting, we were driving, and I was like, wow, I feel like I've known you forever. I feel like I've known you for like a lifetime. And she bent over and she listened, she whispered in my ear. She went, Chris, Chris, ah, ah, you owe me rent money. You've been here for three weeks. <laughs> that is the last time that I did shrooms with my landlord. <laughs> it was funny that we met on Tinder, but you know, unfortunately not a good idea. Um, no, so after all this happened, I thought it'd be fun, you know, like, get divorced, what do you do next? Like, where are you going? Disneyland? No, rehab! 
Day, like, how are you doing? And they went, We're addicted to math. And I was like, Oh, okay, well, we'll we won't be friends. Like, that's not gonna happen. Um, and so that's how rehab started for me. Um, but it was a fun time. Like, I got tan, as you can see. Like, I played volleyball every day. It was a great time. But this is the place that they sent Tiger Woods, Selena Gomez, Michael Whoa. Phelps. This was rich people rehab. This is first world problems rehab. <laughs> like, this is where they send the rich people when they go to camp and I'm still paying off the loans. And so it's really fucking great. And no, I had a good time. Like they had a volleyball court, like I said, they had a pool, they had all you can eat Prozac. It was in <laughs> <laughs> And straight up, like they would give you every single night, they'd be like, what do you need? And I'd be like, well, uh, sleeping pills, uh, a couple cigarettes, like whatever you got. And so I left there addicted to sleeping pills, addicted to oh cigarettes, and addicted to Prozac. So it really helped me. I came in with no drug addiction and left with a serious problem. So it was great. Um, so that was my time there. Um, let's see. You no, know, it's funny. Like, you guys may know that, like, the reason that I ended up at rehab was because I was the ultimate feminist. Like, I was all about empowering women. Like, I would see a woman and be like, go for your career. Like, try it out. Like, Woo! be successful. And I went to my wife and I was like, come on, try it out. Like, figure it out. I really should not have been surprised when she showed up in a Wonder Woman outfit and handed me divorce papers. That yeah! really should have been. I should have expected that. I kind of asked for it. Oh, man. Yeah, it's too dark, isn't it? Anyway. Um, I'm so thankful that you guys are here. I'm so thankful to be able to share silly jokes with you. I've been processing this for two years, and uh, I try to find the laughs and the comedy in with it. Um, so I have more jokes, but I've forgotten most of them because Kieran gave me too much vodka. Have a great night. I love you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Daniel, and the people for forcing me to do this. Keep it going. Jokes yeah. can tell him. Now, what's the deal with air, airplane food? <laughs> Jews, what's up with that? After, after the set, I'm making a list of Jews for no reason. Like, don't worry about it. Woo! <laughs> That's a bad joke. That's why I didn't tell that one. That's why I didn't tell that one.